Welcome to section 4, where we implement React Web Servers and Clients with the Tornado Web Framework. In this video, we implement the beginnings of an asynchronous real-time web server. Let's begin. To begin creating a web server with Tornado, we're going to need to import a few things. We're going to need to import the IO loop, which will be used for our scheduler. And then we need to import the application, which will be used to create our web server. And we also need the request handler to handle regular HTTP requests. And then we are also going to be using WebSockets. So we need to import the WebSocket handler. So let's begin by creating a regular request handler. And we'll call it main handler. And it's a subclass of request handler. And it responds to a GET request. And it will write, hello, stock exchange. So we're going to continue with our previous code and create this server for the stock exchange application. And now that we have this main handler, if you hit this handler, it will write, hello, stock exchange. And in contrast, we're going to have the exchange handler. And this will be a subclass of the WebSocket handler. So what's interesting here is that it doesn't respond to get requests or post requests. It responds to open, on message, and on close. We're going to fill these in as we go along. But basically, when you connect to a WebSocket server, you're opening the connection, and then you handle receiving a message from that client. And then when the client actually leaves the server and closes the WebSocket connection, you respond to the on close message as well. So now let's create the actual server. And it's going to be a singleton. So this is an interesting pattern as well. We're going to be creating the app like this. And we are going to be establishing the routes that the web server responds to and exchange will be pointing to the exchange handler while slash will be pointing to the main handler so if you post or if you submit a get request to slash you will get the response from the main handler if you open up a websocket connection to slash exchange you will get the exchange handler so we close that and then we have a start method and the start method will call app.listen, and it will be listening on port 8,888. So as part of this singleton pattern, we have an instance of the server. There will only ever be one web server. So we define init, we'll say if server.instance is none, then we create the server. And we delegate calls to that server. Now we can main program by calling server the singleton, which will return the only existing instance of the server. And we're going to call start. And because we are creating an asynchronous web server, we have to call io loop dot current, which is the current asynchronous event loop. And then we call start on that as well, so it can begin processing requests. So if we run the program right now, section 4 server, server1.py, it'll start running and nothing will be happening, but the server is indeed running. So going to kill that, and you can see through the traceback that we are in an IO loop. It's the current one that we started in line 41 of our code so far, and it's supposed to run forever because that's how Tornado wants things to work. And it processes whatever events are coming in. So whatever requests happen to hit the server, they are handled through the main handler or through the exchange handler. So what we want in this server, especially in the exchange server, is to be able to process messages. So this is a stock exchange. We're going to be sending data about the latest prices of the stocks. And we're also going to be waiting for new orders to come in from different clients. So in this video, we're just going to set up the basics of that. 
And in the next few videos, you'll see how we fill that in and how we handle different types of messages such as orders and how we handle sending data back to the client. So we want a way to bridge the asynchronous messages received in Tornado to RxPy. So we import unobservable from Rx and we import subject. So you'll note we use subject quite a lot because we have this custom bridging that's happening. So we're in the previous section, we looked at how we could bridge Qt callbacks, GUI callbacks, and make them more reactive. In this case, we are doing the same thing, but with Tornado instead. So we're bridging the gap and taking different callbacks and turning them into reactive observables through the subject class. So when a connection is open, we're going to grab the server and we're going to have a stream for all messages and we're going to pass in a new value and it's going to say a connection has been opened. So we're just going to pass in the whole request so you can get the IP address and the method that was used and everything else. And then when there's a message received, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say grab the one instance of the server and pass in a value and say message. And that is the message that was received. And the same thing whenever the client closes the connection. And we're just passing in the values and we're passing in closed with the request itself. So if you are connecting from different IP addresses, the open message will be opened plus the request, which will contain the IP address of 127.0.0.1. And when you close it, the message will be closed and the second item in that message will be the request and that'll also contain the same IP. So it's a good way of processing so you can open and close the connection and do any other processing you want. And whenever the client sends a message, the messages stream will send it out to any subscribers. So now we actually have to add that messages stream to the server. So we go to the constructor for the server and we say self dot messages just stream to the server. And we want to do some cool reactive things here. So we want to grab the scheduler from Tornado and it's io loop dot current. And then with the messages stream, we want to say only messages is going to be equal to messages dot filter lambda message and message zero equals message. So we only want messages. We don't want the opened and closed values that are coming through when a client opens or closes the WebSocket connection. On top of that, we want to remove that first value, the message value. So we use map and to clean this up a little bit here. And we see Lambda message and message one. So the second item, and then we say dot publish. The reason we do this is because these items are turned into observables and they may start processing right away and we don't quite want that. So we're going to do only messages dot subscribe lambda message print message for now. And then only messages will connect. And that'll be that for setting up the messages stream. So the messages subject will get three types of messages opened message and closed and then only messages will be a filter on that subject and it will filter out anything that is not equal to message so we will only get one type of message through message and then we're going to map that so that we only get the message itself the payload itself and then we are just going to print it out for now in a later section, we will be checking if it's an order message or if it's something else, or if it's a request for an update to stock prices or anything else. And then we'll be sending a response based on that. But for now, we're just printing out what's going on. And we actually need to import from Arcs concurrency. We need to import the IO loop scheduler. So this will hook the reactive Rx Pi library the scheduler into the tornado scheduler. It'll actually use the tornado web framework scheduler for scheduling asynchronous actions and observables. I'm going to go back to main 
And before we actually start any processing, we want a little bit more information about what's going on. So we're going to subscribe to messages here. And we're going to print out message. And then we're going to filter message as well. And we're going to look only for open messages. And they're going to subscribe to that and just print out the message. Connection has been opened.